high school, personally, I considered myself to be incredibly competitive um, with anybody that was like similar grades. I was like, hey, I have to do the best. And I thought I'd be the type of person who can't be friends with other pre-meds because I'd be competing with them for the same spots. And I have to say, the past year has been quite stressful. I had to write the MCAT, I had to apply, then the interviews, and all the waiting. And I couldn't have done it without all of my friends who are pre-meds. I mean, I've made friends with other people too, but I didn't feel that competition. Like, I felt proud that I have such great friends that are applying to med school. And being wanting to be a doctor myself, I was happy that they're succeeding because I'd like to see great doctors when I become a doctor and great colleagues. So that's one thing that I think really enriched my experience, and that's one thing that in the York community I think is very prevalent. Everybody helps each other out and really is supportive of each other, and that, that was great for my past year. For me, one of the main things that attracted me to New York was how cooperative the community is, like just as a science student. Um, science is actually a pretty small faculty, but we have all of the resources from such a large university that York is. Um, as well as we have a college that's affiliated with science. Uh, it's called Bethune College, so as a science student you're automatically affiliated with it. And there's a ton of free resources that are offered through this college. So we have peer mentor program. So when you come to academic orientation, you're assigned a peer mentor, who's also the mentor for 15 to 20 other students. And basically, you'll meet them at academic orientation, they'll show you around campus, and they'll also stay in contact with you throughout the year. Um, as well, we have a uh, past session, which is peer-assisted study session, which is led by uh, an upper year student who got either an A or an A plus in the class. So for example, let's say you're not too great at physics, you can, but you're taking physics in university, let's say first year. Um, so you can go to a first year past session where you can basically just sit there and ask this student all of your questions, and it's all free. Um, also, there's class representatives, so as a first year student, you can also get involved. You can be a class rep for your biology 1000 course, for example. So you would uh, pretty much be the liaison between the class and the professor. So you would maybe have weekly or bi-weekly meetings with your professor, and you would talk to them and say, okay, you know what, the class thought that maybe this last test was really hard. Uh, can we either A, do an extra review class on it, or B, maybe you can consider that when you're writing the next midterm, for example. So that's a really great way to get involved as a first year in addition to research. And you're also part of the peer leader team at Bethune College. And even if you're not a class rep, you could take advantage of that resource there. So I thought that that was really great. I just, I just want to add really quickly, mm -hmm. I have lots of flyers, but all of those programs you just mentioned, awesome. I brought them with me today. So if anybody's interested, I can give you one of those. And just you're speaking about the class representative program. I just want to say that when I was in my first year, was in the summer, I was taking courses. And I started as a class representative, and from there I became a peer tutor, and I became a peer mentor, and I became a peer advisor. And this past year I coordinated the class representative program. So that really allowed me to get involved at York. And I'll second what she said about really having that really strong community feel. Um, and that's definitely one of the things that attracted me to York as well. I applied to be part of the internship program, um, and you can do it uh, either a term or a summer, and then there's also study abroad. So you can affiliate yourself with a particular university um, and then do a study abroad program at a different university in a different country, and you pay the tuition that you would pay here. So you don't pay, if it's more expensive there, you wouldn't be paying more there. But I mean, they, they have specific ones that you could do for science and stuff like that. Yeah, there's also biology field courses, and sometimes they take place in different countries or different provinces, so it all depends on what's being offered. Usually they happen during the summer, just so that you can get away from your other courses, uh, but it all depends on the year. But usually there are opportunities, yeah. Great illusion, there's a great illusion for that high school students believe. They think that the university is just so hard. It's like the courses are just so hard, I won't be able to do them, they're just impossible. I can, there's no way I can do any of this, this stuff. It's just, I just give up right away. But the truth is, you've taken hard courses. You've taken grade 12, biology, chemistry, physics, math courses. It's not that the, it's not that the courses, the subject gets harder. The, the, why, what, what, the challenge, the main challenge is that the students, once they get into university, there's a, a complete freedom. You don't have to come to class. There's no attendance. Nobody calls you, oh, did you, you didn't show up today for school, there's no marks, there's no... So now, you're faced with this, this dilemma, do I study, do I not study? How much time do I give myself to study? Like, how am I going to study? That's where the challenge is, to plan your time out, like Anthony was saying. So, it's not so, don't be worried that, oh, it's going to be sorry. It's the fact, what you're going to have to learn is how to 
plan your time and, and you have to also be responsible to go to class even though who cares if you don't do or don't, no one's going to tell you. That's where the challenge becomes. Are you able to take your own initiative and uh, I'm sure you guys are because this is your time. But still, you're still even at this point, you're, their teachers are guiding you saying, okay, this is what's going to be on the test. This is what, here's the review, Take do these five questions. You won't have that so much in university, it'll be vaguely they'll give you, but that'll be up to you to decide. You're the one in charge, basically. So that's where the challenge becomes. Not so much that it's harder material, it's just now you're in charge. Just because somebody said that you should try taking this course, or I enjoy this course, and this is a bird course, doesn't mean that you should take that bird course, because that bird course, you can get a stone thrown at that bird. <laughs> so, um, no, like realistically enough, we all, we all unique individuals, we all have different learning styles, and if you click with a professor, oftentimes that's when the kind of the magic happens and you really get into the subject and stuff. Listen to your gut, look at the course description, maybe look up rate my prof, see if the prof is nice or not. And then, yeah, like enroll in the course if you like it, because the courses you succeed in, the courses that you do really well in, are the courses that you like and that you're interested in. For example, um, I had, I've taken several English courses as well. I've taken an English course last semester, and I enjoyed it a lot, but I would not recommend it to anybody else, because honestly, my enjoyment came from the fact that we kind of connected with the professor and I really enjoyed the subject, but that doesn't mean that somebody else in my shoes should do the same thing. So. Whenever you're going to be asking people for advice, keep in mind that that's their opinion, that's how they think that should be done. And unless that's hard written in stone, on your requirements list, like you have to take genetics for your major, you don't have to take that course. And that's what's nice about university today versus universities 50 years ago. You have a lot of opportunities to make education what you want it to do. You get what you want out of university rather than be dictating what it is that you need to learn. knew to read over the lecture note, like the sec textbook sections, before I went to the class. I never would do that. I would just, okay, well, I'm going to learn it for the first time in class, I guess. I learned that it was better for me to read everything before, then go to class, hear it for a second time, listen to what's being emphasized, uh, ask any questions that I had the first time I read it, and then read it again when I got home. So that's already three times before you even have a test coming up. And then when you have a test coming up, then you read it again and again. So it, it comes a lot easier. So it took me a while to figure that out, but that's my number one tip. And on, on that note, like yes. a lot of people in first year will record their classes, and I did that, and that is a nightmare. Don't feel like you need to record your class. Go to class and just sit in class and enjoy it in there, because recording, you're gonna end up, two days before your exam, have 15 hours of lectures to listen to, and you don't wanna do that, so. On that note though, if you do record, that doesn't mean don't take notes, because I know people that That's they it, record yeah. with Lisa. Like, I record, and well, she, only one class. And she would there's take some, notes. I mean, there's, and there's, so. and some, some classes, it, you sometimes do need to record, like if a professor doesn't have notes, and he just talks straight, and sometimes, Recording does help, mm -hmm. but don't make it a habit where you're recording five classes, that's five hours, or yeah, that's 15 five, hours three. extra a week that you have to listen mm -hmm. to. Or so if the class is boring, you fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't fall asleep in class. That's a bad and plan. One more is that delay gratification is so much better than oh. instant gratification. So if there is a test coming up, and I found this out in first year because I was like, oh no, I can totally go on with my friends. This stuff is easy. And no, it wasn't as easy as it thought it was. Uh, so I, I've had my fair share of uh, things go awry because I'm like, no, I'm going to go out with my friends tonight and then I can't go out with my friends for the next month because I need to then make up for the mistakes that I made on the previous test. So, you know, if it's the day before a test, I know it kind of makes sense, just don't go around or if, if you have a lot of studying to do and you're like, no, I can put it off, make sure that you keep up with your work because it is easy to fall behind. Um, that's when reading week becomes reading week. You need to catch up on everything. Someone told me that like studying should be like a light jog, not a sprint. So every day if you just do a little bit, it helps it a lot because you're breaking up in small chunks, not just all at once in one night and you have to remember. So. How much time do you need to study for a test or an exam? This is not something, you do not learn this in high school. Teachers don't teach, don't say, well, how much time do you, do you need to study for the test? They just say, here's the test, have a nice day, we'll be on Tuesday. <laughs> so the question is, this is what you need to do. 
you have to learn to become introspective, to look in within yourself and say, okay, how much do I understand? How much do I need to understand? You have to give yourself constant feedback because you're, you're in control of your life and in your future. Where am I going to be in five years from now? So you have to, you have the, what you need to do as a university student is to evaluate yourself and where you're going and how much you need to, what it takes for you to succeed. Not to get involved, I'd say. Yeah, that's true. Like at commute, for example, there's always opportunities here. You don't always have to do something science related, right? It's nice to kind of just get out there and get your feelers out and see what you like too. If let's say you want to get um, connected via sports, is that you really like playing soccer? They they have these intramural, so you can play four Bethune against other colleges, and essentially you. Play and it's just something to you know get involved in doing like that. And another way of getting involved is join one of these one of these programs after so like the past program and CR and stuff like that. So if you start out as a CR, then maybe afterwards you want to become a peer mentor because you want to help first years that are coming here. You can do that, right? So there's always opportunities. It's just you might have to go and find them. And something that might help you with that is why you connect. So it'll essentially show you all of the clubs and opportunities that are available for you to join um, and it, it's kind of like a one-stop shop for you to see you know oh this is a club that i'm going to be interested in or this is a, a sport that i might want to play on that topic of clubs there's like dozens and dozens and dozens of them there's like the astronomy club the physics club there's like the comedian i don't know there's like a club for everything and if you don't find a club that you like it's very easy to start your own one sometimes they could be pretty small so getting an executive position on the club isn't all that hard, it looks good on a resume, that's like what you're thinking it all along those terms, I don't know. Like I joined a choir when I was in my second year, which I really loved, I did that all year, it was awesome. So like any kind of interest that you have, there's gonna be something. Uh, the class sizes do shrink. So for example, my molecular biology class, I think there were 70 students. So it becomes pretty, pretty <coughs> tiny actually. And it's not just like you, it's not just that you kind of get thrown into this lecture and that's it. Um, so there is a lab component to it as well. So in the lab, it's capped at 20, yeah. 25. 20, 20, 25 students. So essentially, you there will be 25 students essentially assigned to one TA. So in addition to that, don't hesitate to go to office hours because that's a that's somewhere where you can really kind of decrease the ratio. Um, because not too many people use a professor's office hours unless it's the day before a test. Right? Because that's when everyone's like, oh my god, I don't know anything. <laughs> but kind of, you know, if you go and you make sure that the prof knows who you are and knows your name, um, it kind of it works in your favor. Because I feel like you kind of pick up on how the professor might explain something instead of explaining it one-on-one. -on -one. And so that might make your class time more efficient, more effective, and you'll understand what to study so that your time becomes better and then that can lead to better time management.